Welcome. This video is going to look at the concept of percent yield. And percent yield indicates the success or the efficiency of a reaction. And what we've been talking about with stoichiometry and limiting reactants is predicting if every single reactant molecule available for the limiting reactant actually reacted and formed product, how much would you get? But in reality, that doesn't happen. There's a variety of reasons why it doesn't happen, and some of it's because when you're pouring your reactants together, some of the liquid sticks to the container, or some of the solid sticks to the filter paper, or other reasons that are totally beyond your control is the reaction stops early, or it just slows down so much, like when your batteries are going dead. You could still listen to your music, but who really wants to listen to your music going slowly? At some point, you just say, you know what? I'm going to change them. So the same thing happens with the reaction. When it goes slow enough, it's not worth waiting for those last few molecules to form. And there's also what are called competing reactions that interfere. Because our reactions are always surrounded by air, that means oxygen, nitrogen, other things in the air can also react with your reactants. So percent yield simply looks at how much did you actually get compared to how much did you expect to get. And so the actual yield is what you would measure in the lab, what you actually got, and then the theoretical yield is what we've been calculating. That's what we've been doing with stoichiometry. It's what you calculate or predict from the equation based on what you put in, based on your limiting reactant. So in industry, this is an important thing to know because you have to look at your efficiency, your percent yield, compared to the cost and the time it takes to increase that yield. So in industry, it's all about making as much product as you can as quickly as you can. So percent yield is calculated just like any percentage. You take what you have, the part that you're interested in, out of the total times 100%. So the part we're interested in is what we actually made or yielded compared to what we expected to make. That's considered the whole. So taking a look at my example here, I've told you that you run a reaction and it produces 105.5 grams of silver metal. So this is my actual yield. This is going to go on top when I calculate my percent yield. Using the balanced equation and your starting amount of reacted, you predict a theoretical yield of 425 grams. So somebody's already figured out the limiting reactant, predicted how much we'll get, what's the percent yield. So this is the theoretical here. So calculating percent yield then, I take the part, it should always be the smaller amount for your actual, 105.5 grams, I divide it by the predicted amount, 425 grams, times 100%, and my percent yield doesn't look that great. Is this is a good yield? It depends on the reaction. Some reactions, this is uh, right around 25%, or if I carry my sig figs, 24.82%. For some reactions, this would be considered a very good yield. For other reactions, this is not a good yield. So. In industry, what's a good yield? It all depends on the techniques we have. So for my first uh, problem for you to try, it says, what is the percent yield if 10 grams of methane is burned and produces 19.5 grams of water? Now you have to be careful here because 10 grams of methane is my reactant, but 19.5 grams is my water. So this is my actual yield. 10 grams is not my theoretical yield. That's my starting amount of product, I mean of reactant. So I need to do several things here. I need to look at CH4. When it burns or combusts, it combines with CO2 or with O2 and produces CO2 plus H2O. So to balance this, I'm going to need a two there and a three here, and I'm gonna have to figure out how much it produces. So 10 grams, it doesn't mention anything about oxygen, so we can assume that the 10 grams is our limiting reactant. And I have to go ahead and figure out how many grams of H2O this would produce. 
So now that I've gotten you this far, see if you can pause and figure this out on your own and then watch my solution. So I'm gonna need to change my 10 grams of methane into moles because then I can predict my moles of water and calculate my grams of water. So 10 grams of methane, change that to moles. I have 12.01 for my one carbon plus the four hydrogen, our 101 each. So this is 16.05 grams for a molar mass, which means 10 divided by 16.05 is 0.623 moles of CH4. Looking at my balanced equation, I should get two moles of water from every one mole of CH4 So that's going to double to 1.25 moles of water. So 0.623 moles of methane will produce 1.25 moles of water. And 1.25 moles of water then in grams, we know that water has a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. Probably have that memorized by now. So I would expect 10 grams of methane to be able to produce 22.45 grams of water. So now I have my actual yield, oh, my actual yield of 19.5. I have my um, predicted or theoretical yield of 22.5. So now if I just get myself a little more space here, I could take my 19.5 what was actually measured in the lab, divide by the 22.5 grams that the reaction predicts we should get, multiply by 100%, and I would expect a yield of 86.9%, which seems like a pretty good yield. So my second example here is being asked, what's the percent yield if 700 grams of octane burns, so that's going to be with O2, and produces 1,800 grams of carbon dioxide, but remember, combustion reactions will also produce H2O when it's uh, fossil fuel or hydrocarbon. So go ahead and pause and see if you could come up with the balanced equation, the theoretical yield, and then use that to calculate your percent yield. So looking at the balanced equation, this equation uh, gets kind of big because I actually need two moles of octane to combine with 25 moles of oxygen, and I get 16 moles of CO2 and 18 moles of H2O. So my actual yield is 1,800 grams of CO2, but I need to know how much should have been formed if I had 700 grams of octane. So I want to change this to moles predict moles and grams of octane, of uh, CO2 that should have been produced from this octane. So again, if you haven't finished your solution, go ahead and pause and try that. Otherwise, if you're ready to see my solution, 700 grams of octane, one mole, pretty good size here. I've got eight times the 12.01 plus the 18 hydrogen times 1.01. So I'm seeing a molar mass of 114.26. So 700 grams, even though it sounds like a lot, is only 6.13 moles of octane. And, turn that up a little bit for you, C8. And so then, as far as carbon dioxide, I should get 16 moles of CO2 from every two moles of C8H18. So I should expect 49.01 moles. So up here, 49.01 moles of CO2. And if it's 49.01 moles, 
I can now figure out how many grams of CO2 is being produced because CO2, I've got my two oxygen at 16 each and then the carbon, so this is 44.01 grams per mole And this is 2,157 grams of CO2. And this is an important calculation as we look at climate change and how much CO2 we're putting into the air versus how much CO2 trees are removing from the air. So there's an example of working percent yield.